please welcome Carl Roy. And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, Mark Natural Winter. Carl was the favourite to win it, and I thought it just, just wasn't Carl in there that night. Carl Wright in the green shorts here looking to keep the title on Merseyside. So two or three downs went by, I'm screaming at him then, you've got to use the right hands. And he's saying to me, I can see the openings, but I can't throw it. I can see the openings, but I can't throw it. He was getting punched, which he never normally did, you know, he, you get digs, punches taken in, but he was taking more than what he should have been doing. And as the fight was going on, we were saying, he's he lost that round. He's lost that round. We could see from an early stage, it wasn't the same Carl Wright. Mark Winters from Antrim in Northern Ireland is the British light welterweight champion. Something niggling back in my mind. When they got that phone call to say that he was in the Royal. It's decent. I, I ran in the hospital and, and it was just said, hey, um, I've, I've got a boxer in the car. He's just done 12 rounds. I don't know whether he's dehydrated, but I can't wake him up. Took Nicky into a room and he said to me, hey, can you go and see the doctor? Or Carl was... <laughs> Them. I just looked at him and I said, you won't die. I said, you can't die. I said, are you listening to me? And I was shouting at him. I was angry with him, if you know what I mean. How dare you go, sort of thing. I said, you won't go, Carl. I said, this is the biggest fight of your life. Liverpool boxer Carl Wright is critically ill on a life support machine tonight. He collapsed on his way home from losing a title fight over 12 rounds. He had emergency surgery to remove a blood clot from his brain. Carl Wright only ever had one ambition, to be the best. For a young working class boy growing up on the streets of Everton, it was no easy feat. But hours of practice paid off. Experts predicted a glittering future ahead. He survived the coma, but woke up with his hopes and dreams in ruins. He woke up to the devastating news that he'd never be able to box again. This is his story. Carl was a good amateur. He was uh, boxing for his country. Uh, I think it was 11 or 12 times. He had the aggressive there, see? You know, like that's how you can tell with a, a young kid. Young kid wants to fight, takes a lot in the ring, you know what I mean? Some kids go come to the gym and they get a bang and they don't come back no more. But like they stay there, you know what I mean? Carl Wright. <laughs> oh, what a dynamite start this is. Sutton fight against him in about three weeks, this. Oh, is it? And how, did, how did they get on last time? Uh, the Liverpool lad got it last time. Right making his Golden Belt debut here tonight, but as I say, we've seen Young Jones before, and last time out he won. Well, an action-packed first round, both boys looking a little bit tired at the end of it, but that's hardly surprising considering the furious pace they sat right from the off. Couldn't go to watch them. You hear all them smacks going in and that. Last 10 seconds of the contest now, and you will get an instantaneous decision. The new light worldwide championship of Grand Green, Mark Walter. Traffic winner. Tough luck for Carl Wright. Carl phoned me down at half nine. I said, you okay? He said, yeah, I'm fine. He said, it's one of them things. That's Carl, he's not a bad loser, you know. He said, I'm thinking of packing it in now. I can't win this. That's it. He said, I might as well speak. I'm getting on now. And, what have you? So I said, well, whatever you want to do, I'll stick by you. I said, you know, if you want to pack the boxing in, you want to carry on, I'm with you all the way. He'd seen a doctor in the ring, 
know, before you get go out the ring, you've got to you know, get your pupils te- checked. He got that. He never seen nothing. And then on the way home, he was complaining of an headache then. He said, oh, my head's banging. My man shouting, come on, Carl, we're nearly there. And, you know, wherever he was, we're only here now, we're only here. But he was, I was getting you know, out of him. You know, now and again, there'd be nothing for, say, five, ten minutes. And then, so then when I got to the end of the motorway, he was shaking for meds at all, you know, and I was just belting in you know, through the streets then to get him to the Royal. He was breathing at the time, but not very well. So we immediately called for the anaesthetist at, at, to help us with his airway. And we proceeded to uh, monitor his breathing and set up drips, take off blood tests. And eventually, once he was stable from that point of view, to arrange for a CT or CAT scan of his brain. And I, I stood there and I had a brain injury and everything flashed through my mind there. I thought, no, can't be. He, he put him on a drip. I was thinking, put him on a drip, give him some fluids, he'll be okay in an hour. We tried to get across to them that he was critically ill and that he needed neurosurgery as quickly as possible and that exactly, and that the outcome would be dependent both on the on the urgency of the operation and on feet to some extent. He said, you know, do you realise how bad he is? And I was like, oh, I said, so what are we waiting for? He said, we're just going to find out the results of the scan. And if it's what I think it is, he'll have to be rushed to Walton for an emergency operation. The doctor who was performing the operation come out and he said, well, I have to tell you now, he mightn't survive the operation. And with that, I mean, you heard everyone, you know, all screaming and what have you. And I thought, no, I was saying to myself, it's only a precaution, he's got to tell me that. He's got to. And um, he said, so it'll be a couple of hours, you know. And I just said, just do your best. He's had a major head injury. He, is, he has significant risks from this, and they include a risk to life, so he, he could die from this, a risk of uh, stroke or disability, a risk of epilepsy, having fits in the future. Um, and you explained that you know, if we do nothing, he's likely to deteriorate and die. Just waiting for them a few hours it was like waiting a lifetime. Waiting for that doctor to come back out and tell you that for one he was alive and that everything went out according to plan and it was just a matter of healing time. So waiting for him to come back out those doors, I'll never ever want to go through that again in my life. Did you know you were pregnant at the time? <laughs> you sat in there, because you know, three o'clock when they finished operating, I took him off the boat, intensive care. And the nurse said, have you ever been in intensive care before? She said, no. She said, well, be prepared. When we went in the scene, I went, oh, his head was like a big balloon, just blew up. Horrible. You know, I thought he was going to say, the operation's gone great. It's just a matter of waiting for Carl to wake up. It, it just wasn't like that. We went in and I said, well, 
has he had a scar? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, what's the outcome then? Is, is he getting better? And he said, no. He said, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, he said, but um, I don't think Carl's going to survive this injury. I remember I looked at him. I thought he hasn't just said that. And I said, pardon, could you repeat that? He said, yes, he's not going to survive this operation. And I think he must have said it four times before it sank in. She was in a total state of shock. When I walked in the hospital, she came running up to me, all shouting, Dad. And um, she said, um, Dad, why call? Why him? I said, yeah, obviously, he's trying to give you a best to her. I said, oh, she's OK. He'll be all right, love. You know, he's, he's in possibly the best hospital there is in Europe. This is the best place he'll be OK. So all the family were sitting around and there must have been 30 or 40 other lads, so they'd all heard about it, and they'd all just sitting around and, put, and they waiting to see the outcome, see if everything was okay. It's unbelievable how many people were waiting. When he was in intensive care, people were coming out after seeing him and they were crying and saying prayers. I never stopped anyone going in because we didn't know whether he'd survive or not, you know what I mean? So I just let anyone go in to see him in the intensive care. The doctors and nurses said, like, you know, do you want to stop these coming in? I said, no, let them come in and see him, you know what I mean? So he must have been 500 people. And he was always. 10 or 12 people down his bed every night. Downstairs, they've been quitting. I remember saying to me, Auntie, who's going to look after me? And I mean, how selfish is that? Who's going to look after me? And she was half laughing, she said, I'll look after you. But it's just everything, you know. Especially when you are so close to someone, the thought of losing them is just a, you know. Conscious level is very low, then you're described as being in coma, and yes, he was. Um, but from then on, once once they had uh, given him drugs to keep him asleep and put a uh, intubated and ventilated him, he was then in, I suppose, a drug-induced coma. Okay, but you do that to protect his intracranial environment. If you took him off the drugs, I think the last lot, about nine o'clock in the morning. I think it was following week, Tuesday, and about quarter to ten, his family were there, and I come in about quarter to ten, and he said, he's got his eyes open. I had all of his hand, I said, he's squeezing your finger then. Are you sure? He, said, he knows we're here. So I said, can you hear those cat? He said, yeah. He never said that. He never moved. Just a tear came out of his eye. Like that. It was a memory he woke up, you know, naturally like. Did you ever wonder what he was gonna be like? Yeah, well that's that's what that's what was in my head all the while, you know. Whether he's gonna be like a cabbage or what, but even the doctors didn't know which way he was gonna wake up. All the soldiers he wouldn't be the same fella. So in other words, you'd expect him the worst, you know. The doctors did warn us about things that could be affected with Carl. For one, he said he could have a personality disorder. He's going to have memory loss. They don't know how long the memory loss will be with him, if it will be forever or it'll gradually start coming back. They don't know, they didn't know when he could remember previous to the fight. So obviously I was thinking, what if you can't remember I'm pregnant? Things like that, because that was only like a fortnight before 
he went away to spa. So it was not knowing what he was going to be like that scared me the most as well. It wasn't him, like, you know what I mean? It just wasn't him, like, he couldn't do nothing for himself or nothing. He couldn't feed himself, he couldn't go to the toilet, he couldn't do nothing. So I just thought, well, how is that going to break down all the wine, you know what I mean? Well, as the weeks progressed and he started wanting to get out of bed and all that, they got him out of bed and put him in a wheelchair and he tried to get up and fell over. So we had to take him down again and see whether he was all right, you know? I whispered to Carl, I said, do you remember what happened before you went away to spa? And he was looking at me and I was saying, think it's to do with me and you. Can you remember? And he sort of rolled his eyes and patted me on the stomach. So to me, that was, he knew I was pregnant. But obviously when I went back with the scan, he forgot he even said that to me because he couldn't remember 20 minutes ago. And this was a couple of days later. So I went in and showed him the scan and he put his thumb up and he said, everything okay? And I said, yeah, you know, and I was made up that he was aware of we were going to have another baby. At Morrison's, we're on a mission. Our price mission plus. It means we're on a mission to bring you low, low prices, plus great offers every week. On a mission to save you pounds, not points. On a mission to keep prices in store the same right across the country. So you make big savings at Morrison's, wherever you live. Too much fun to be taken seriously. Time is the new name in computer retailing. At Time, we're committed to making computer buying easy. It's time for plain English. Not technical jargon. It's time we cut out the middleman. And cut the cost of computers. So if you're looking for a computer, isn't it time you talk to us? Time Computer Systems, we're on your side. He's not my dad, he's my granddad. Kellogg's Healthwise Brand Flakes have body balanced nutrition. Try them with a healthy diet and exercise. That's my dad. He says he's in with a chance this year. What doing it to my dad? Kellogg's Healthwise Brand Flakes, a step in the right direction. Not a word to anyone. This is going to be our little secret. Together, we can stop cruelty to children. Full stop. Please remember to sign your NSPCC full stop pledge. from The Witch. New Hits 99 with a cause. Steps and Wendy Houston. The massive number one from Blondie. It's got to be New Hits 99. See it first on video. Watch Mel Gibson and Danny Glover get lethal. In Lethal Weapon 4, rent the video now. been in some sort of accident. I didn't even know I'd, I'd boxed or not. But, you know, 
I didn't really, I didn't know where I was for, you know, for a while. I like three swords. <laughs> My first memory is, you know, in hospital. I remember bits and pieces from hospital. And as it, when I got home, you know, things were coming back slowly. I just remember, like, Nicola coming in and you know, seeing different doctors and whatever. I don't really remember a lot about it. I remember the nun. She used to come in every day and pray by my side. When I did come round, she still came in to see me, which I thought was brilliant. And it gave me the strength to pray. No, I never used to pray and whatever. But it, it, it's helped me a lot now, you know, to have a bit of faith. And I'll go to church every Sunday. And I thank God for letting me live. My mates would all go to the for me, but that's life, isn't it? You know, what's happened, happened. You know, he's looking back, look forward now, and I've said that all along. He can't do as much as he could before, but that will come in time, I think. It's Carl, but we've still got a long way to go. He's not narky anymore. I mean, he has his moments, but only trivial, silly things, and usually it's to himself anyway. I just take no notice. But he's far better than he was in the hospital. I thought I couldn't stand him being like this. I thought, my call's gone. I don't know who this fella is, and I'm going to have to look after him. But it hasn't. He's been great. He's helped himself a lot. Physios have, uh, have advised me to do little, you know, as much as I can, but don't do too much. So just do a little bit of training, try and get my right side back to normal. He won't sit back and go, oh, I can't move my right hand side, that's the end of it. He'll make sure he can move it and improve it, and he will. Obviously, I thought, you know, this baby's not going to have any daddy, but that's going to be different in two weeks. That really will be special. Mark Winters is a welcome and regular visitor to the Wright household in Liverpool, watching old videos with a fighter who will never fight again. And now, despite his experience, he wants Mark Winters to box again. I wish that I could be in there, but obviously I can't. You know, my health is more important to me now. But I hope Mark goes on and wins the Longsdale belt. It keeps me alive then. It, you know, it keeps my memory in boxing alive. Winters thought long and hard about returning to the ring, but with Carl's blessing, he's ready to carry on. We all know the risks in taking, uh, taking up boxing, and we, we chose the same career and everything. And as I said, we, we, we're just going to get on with it. Um, Carl's got on with it, so the least that I can do is, is for myself to get on with it. Her name's Taylor and Margaret. She weighed six pound nine. She's only a little dot. At one point, Carl had gone out to use the phone when I was just getting contractions. He said, I'll go and phone everybody and tell them that we're here because we hadn't let anybody know. And for a split second, I imagined being in labour without him and it scared the living daylights out of me. And it, I was made up that I could shout, go and get Carl. And before I knew it, Carl come back in then. It's just an absolute miracle that she's here in one piece and he is because she was a little fighter at the end of the day as well. You know, obviously with the stress I was under, I thought I'd lose her as well. So she's another little fighter, another little righty, mm. little fighter like you. I think it's great that I'm here to see the birth of this baby because, you know, it's touch and go for me. Nicola knows it more than anyone. What's he called her? Taylor. Hello, Taylor. To look at her now, I'm a father. I'm here for her. I do everything for her. And I'm just amazed how beautiful she is. 
Like a mother there. <laughs> She's lovely. Let's look at her little life. Look at our little chain now. Adam Carly as our guest of honour is a boost not only for our club but also for the community. Once word went out that Carl was coming, the phone never stopped. Tickets, tickets. I invited Carly as a friend. And then one thing's led to know that he's now become guest of honour. We're just looking to see how many broken fingers you see. And this is before every contest these lads go through this. Got the gum shield. Well, you see yeah. Okay, you're all right. That's it, he's okay. Yeah. Everything's been checked out. Yeah. Heart and lungs, listen to him. Well, Carl Wright was a boxer who was a guest of honour here tonight. He had to give the game up through injury. And the Northern North West Boxing Association and Tower Hill Boxing Club in particular wanted him to be here and to put over to him their thanks to him for his career and also to, for you to show your appreciation to a very fine boxer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it is a barbaric sport, but I again would stress a barbaric sport, it's going to take place. You cannot stop this sort of thing because people are aggressive towards one another. And I'd rather have that aggression controlled in a boxing ring where we can keep an eye on what's going on than to not have that control. And heaven help me, Carl Wright's injuries would be small in comparison to what could happen to people if they did it unregulated. <laughs> Kids are giving her everything. It's only amateur kids. There's no money involved. They're doing it because they love to sport. It's good to see the kids. How dedicated they are. Good memories when I was an amateur boxer. I enjoyed the amateur boxing so much. You get so much out of it when you're a kid. Get me off the street and get me fit. The winner and the gun and loser. You see people like Carl Wright on the stage, who is an ex-professional boxer. What do you think? Yeah, I want to be like him. Yeah. Like when I'm older, get up on other shows and stages and present trophies and all that. I want to get as, like, as far as him in the, in the career and all that. The boxing wasn't mega bucks. The boxing, anybody will tell you that. It doesn't pay big money until you are up there. But obviously it did help us, but now we have no income coming in. So you have to rely on your social security now, which I don't like that, you know. It's, um, I think you, be, you get stuck in a rut sort of thing. All right, Joe. It's lovely to know that people are so considerate. I mean, I know what people are doing. They've seen our situation and said, we'll help Carl any way we can, which is great. I mean, any cause, like the dockers, things like that, I always put money in the box because you think, they're only, after all, they're only one of us. They've all got families, and I'd hate to be in that situation. So if I can, I'd help as well. And that's what the people are doing today on the charity. 
football match with Carl, which I think he's kicking off, which will be funny. I hope he doesn't play though, because he's got two left feet. <laughs> How are you yourself anyway? Come on, lad, yeah? Get me. Have you been doing a bit of running, have you? Yeah, I've been doing a clean mile. That's alright, isn't it? It's a good day. Yeah, it's yeah I wanted to, I mean, what I want to do for me, I wanted to do the mile. Yeah. That's my aim now, you know what I mean? Because it's obviously said everything with the road ahead of you all that. Yeah, it's Just it's take just your time, that's, that's what it. the doctor said to me. Don't overdo it. That's right. Don't you know push I mean? yourself too much, you know what I mean? So I mean you know, your like body's still recovering. What's that, seven months? Seven yeah. months ago? And you're running? Yeah. Lucky lad, lad. I went and see him, know that the specialist, Dr. Shaw, yeah. said to me, I can't believe the progress you've made already. What's that, Joe? You know, you've done really well. But, uh, like you say, just take it easy. There's no one on the... No one on Get a kit on here and I'll kick, I'll kick it all over hey. the place. I'm rubbish, lads. You wouldn't want me. I'm made up, these are just ordinary lads. I've done all half of them. And they've came here today giving their time up to play a game of football. Do you know what, lad? I used to be able to do them, but I can't do them no more. Yeah, snapped it off. It's a few quid, doesn't it? Stand up, stand up! Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Go, 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 Help each other out. Everyone's in trouble. We all uh, pull together and that's what we do around here, you know, especially in this area. Like. Obviously, we're going to struggle, but you know, a couple of years time, I'll, I'll get myself back on to what I was, and hopefully get a little bit of work or something. Don't want to, you know, be on the door all my life. Carl's been in the gym all his life, so obviously from a fighter going to a trainer, it's sort of the next chapter of your career. Well, Johnny Armour, he's fighting for the Super Bantamweight title. Oh, and he's Carl Slavero from America. He's a cracker. So have you got him signed up, not Johnny? Yeah, yeah, Johnny Armour. So it's, it's another good... Yeah, he's a good fighter. Yeah. So it's sort of more or less six weeks going off to it now, so we're going to be getting back in the gym for a moment. Oh, it's only six weeks off. Oh, yeah, you six weeks off, so now, so nothing. as I say, I'll yeah. be back in, so yeah. look, you'll get in with the lads, yeah. say, on Monday. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go for the day, show, yeah. yeah. And Carl knows can keep time for me, you know, until yeah. he gets a bit better. Yeah. As soon as he's 100% and that, he'll be taking over me, I think. Oh, it's brilliant <laughs> having him back, you know, we yeah. need Carl back in the gym. It's great, it'll be yeah. great for the lads, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, as I say. You know, because he knows the dieting and he, know, he knows more dieting than me, you know what I mean? The only problem is he knows how to cheat more than me. I can get advice lads about dieting and running and whatever, you know. Yeah. As you know, John, I've been through it. I know what it's about. What else so I'd like to pass my knowledge on to other fighters. And it's great Collins asked me, yeah. you know, to come in with him. Yeah. But well, without, without John, like, I wouldn't even have a job, so... It's great we're getting, getting the opportunity of you, John, to okay, so pass our knowledge, John. It'd be great to have been in the gym, Carl. Honestly, you know, the, the sooner the better, obviously, you know, because, I mean, when you're in the gym, I mean, you're getting fighters, it's hard to keep fighters in the gym most of the time, you know, seeing life, and seeing you're in, they've got no excuse, it'll be like sort of a, a will for them to get back in yeah. the gym, say, well, Carl writes in the gym, we've got to get in the gym. Yeah. You know, so it'd be more of a booster, I think, yeah. you know.
Women everywhere, every week. Is your body ready to experience extreme pleasure? Your pupils will dilate. Nasal receptors will be stimulated. Saliva glands will be activated. Serotonin levels in your brain will heighten. Your heart will beat faster. And your adrenaline levels will soar. All this from a frozen pizza. You'll understand when you try freshetta. It's made from only the finest ingredients. And because the dough isn't pre-cooked, it bakes and rises in the oven. Freshetta. Experience the pleasure. Two sausages, eggs, chips and beans. Only my mum cooks better. I love her roast on a Sunday after football. It helps me recover from the night before. Every Friday and Saturday I have a night on the tiles, but I can handle it. People say you carry on like that and one day your ticket's gonna pack in. What do they know? If I get a beer belly when I'm older, I'll do something about it then. After all, I've got no real responsibilities yet. Live life for the moment, that's what I say. But you've got to, haven't you? You could get hit by a bus tomorrow. We're doing all we can to prevent the UK's biggest killer. Are you? A gourmet meal in under 10 minutes? Is it just a crazy dream? Pierre, you're French. What are you going to do for us? Today I'm going to do a little... Can't wait. Phil. Well, I've gone for tender rump steak in a wild mushroom sauce with Dauphinoise potatoes and broccoli florets. Yes, yeah, ten minutes, Jill. Introducing Sainsbury's Fresh Creations, an imaginative new range of superb meals. Ready to eat in less than ten minutes. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Mm. Oh, yes. Definitely. Well... <laughs> Sainsbury's Fresh Creations. Incredible meals, incredibly quick. Do you know, every Easter, there's only one thing that my lovely old granny really looks forward to, and that's a delicious Terry's chocolate orange. Box. No, she likes boxes. She collects them. Terry's chocolate orange. It's not Terry's. It's mine. We have a young lady here who's done some sinful and shameful things. What have you done, Claire? I stuck gum under tables and chairs. Where, Claire? Mainly at work. Anything else? I once stuck it in my sister's head because she said I had thighs like my mother. Ah, take a packet of three more extra strong mints, then say it. Thank you, Trebor. In this week's Woman, why does his wife stay with him? The hardest choice some children have to make. And EastEnders Romance. This week's Woman, out now. Johnny Armour's coming up, they don't want him no training in London. They want him to no get away from London, so they're bringing him up to Liverpool, and he's a friend of you know, Carl Wright, so, and I'm a friend of Carl, so, and, a, and a friend, I'm a friend of his manager, so they just brought us in you know, to look after him you know, while he comes up from London, and uh, he's going to stay, you know, in uh, my mum and dad's. He was Commonwealth champion, European champion, I think he's 24 fights unbeaten, and uh, and he's got a world title fight, so this is his big one, so the best thing for him is to get away from home. Have you met him before? Do you know what he looks like? Yeah, I've, I've seen him fight lot, lots of times. Carl went to East Germany with him, you no know, boxing against East Germany with England. But uh, this, this will be the first time I've met him. Hello, Johnny, you call him. You doing? You're all right? Yeah, I'll just say uh, I'll tell you with them bags and that. When you raise your hips this time, Carl, just do that one more time for me. Okay, and in a minute, do you want to just take your shoulders, your arms over your head again? Just rest your hands behind your head for me while you're holding your hips there. Just keep those hips up as much as you can. The balance and coordination were definitely causing him some problems. And, uh, you know, sort of putting him at risk of stumbling. And perhaps make, with having a young family at home, making him wary 
around the kids in case he, he fell near the kids or, you know, with handling young children if you don't feel completely sound on your feet, that sort of thing. But it sort of compromises your abilities there. A lot of what we've been doing over the last six months is trying to build up the, the balance and coordination skills, but a lot of it at the moment requires Carl to think about it. So we're just beginning to move on to some of the tasks with slightly adapted equipment that Carl's able to work on at home as sort of everyday balance stuff. Oh, you're getting pushed hard, Johnny. You'll be wanting to go home in two weeks. <laughs> I said, listen, there's no way he's down here on the toilet. Oh, yeah. no. What I'm saying is yeah. that he ain't going back nowhere. Yeah. He don't go on. He's got his ear now to his bike. He's just going to do a bit of budging. <laughs> Lock the leg. Yeah, he's starting to think he's in physio today. He wants to come and meet Johnny. Well, I said, you know, there's plenty of time on that. Like he's come on like Carl, he's, yeah, he's just normal now. Just find something in front of you to fix your gaze on. So you're just going by what you feel under your feet. Try not to look at your feet, but don't rush. He's learning to slow down a bit, particularly when he's trying to walk backwards, because he used to get into a situation, just one more time, Carl, where he would start to come backwards and then he would start to speed up Realise he was falling backwards, but not being able to make the adjustments, and the movement would go faster and faster, and he'd end up falling backwards like this. But he would be looking at what he was doing too much. So trying just to get him to feel, to work on what he can feel, not on what he can see. Hey, John. Go on, on your way. Watch the car, John, so go down, down the bottom, back up here. Yeah. Do it five times, I'll show you feel it. Down the bottom. It's hard enough walking up this hill. Never mind running up it. Very steep hill, so uh, as you're getting up it, you think, oh, this is all right, but when you're halfway up it, then it really hurts. Good, very good for your stamina. Come on, Johnny. Come on, let's work it now. Come on. Obviously, he misses the boxing, and that's what upsets me the most. I could be lying there, and I say, "What? What you hate about this accident?" And he says, "Not being able to box." He said that really gets to me. He said, "But then I override it by saying, well, I might have been dead." And that's all we, he does to get on with it. I suppose he could be bitter and say, why me? And I'll never box again. But he doesn't. Just now and then he just says, I really miss the boxing, you know, Nick. And that gets me. That really gets me. Keep working, John. Come on, Johnny. Dig in now. Early morning. No, there's no funerals, you know. It's not as bad. It's not too much traffic on the road, so the funerals are not too bad. Get, get you up early. Get you, you know, build your stamina up, and you, your discipline's there when you're up early. You know, you know you've got to be up early, so you go to bed early and rest. Because otherwise, you won't be able to get on these hills and do it. Build your stamina up, brilliant. You can't beat these hills for stamina. And that's what. That's what they're there for. That's where you used to come from. used to come all the time on the hills, yeah. Keep it going, John. Keep working, John. Come on, jog it out. Doing very good. Fitness is there. I've got no, you know, no doubt that he's going to win the title. That's all. Being on the Mersey side is a bit different. But it's very good running up here. The hills are that much harder. You know, cold's pushing me very hard. And that's what I need to 
win this fight, I've got about 12 rounds, so I want to be 110% fit. You've got to be pushed. Yeah, that's why I have to be pushed. And uh, that's what I need to win this fight, so uh, I'll be coming away with that uh, bell. All going well. You want to win it? Let's see you win it, John. Keep it going, right to the end. Come on, let's see the new champ. Hello, Rodney. Hello, Rodney. John, how's it going? How are you saying? You know the Johnny Armour show, the 12. Uh, obviously, Philip Holiday is on the bill. Uh, do, do you want us? Will we be making a match, or will you, are you going to raise your opponent? It's regarding the, the show at the Elephant in Castle on December the 12th, Stuart. The travel arrangements for the judges. Uh, I need to have a flight from Philadelphia for Link Carter. If, if, if Bill gives me a dress, I'll send one for you. Yeah, send will stay down soon. Or two inside? Yeah, two inside. Okay, fine. They're going quicker than inside, man. Is that? That's what we need, though, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. That's yeah. what we need. So push down, keep pushing now. Yeah. <laughs> Up the middle. Short red. Oh, yeah. What's he got to drop now? He's on the way. He's on the way now. He's sent. Spot on now, isn't it? Yeah, well, I was thinking like a little bit heavy there. You know, pound heavier. He's got to start coming down. He's yeah. coming down. He's only been up here now for five weeks. Going into the last week of training now, so. He's going to have his last hard session today and then it's uh, just more or less recharging the batteries after today. Take it easy, just ticking all over. He's had a good spa today and he's finishing off early today. He's looking well. He's trained hard. Looking sharp on the pads. You can see, you know, I think he'll do it. I think there's about four or five coaches already going from Kent, Chatham, and there's a, I've got London, uh, a quite a big following from London as well, like East London, Bethnal Green, so that should be good as well. But uh, wherever you go, yours here, the Scousers, they've always got big mouths. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come back down here? <laughs> Did you ever think that Liverpool was going to figure in your future like this? I didn't, no. I thought it was too far away sort of thing to be... Uh, training and just getting away from everyone but it's done me the world of good I definitely be a I better so what did you think when you was coming up you know with Terry as manager saying you've never thought never met me could have been a little owl foggy put years on you you know what I mean but like you said I have to do it I want to get focused come on new champ come on new champ keep it going Johnny to the end come on to the end Sig deep, come on, to the end, Johnny. Come on, keep going. New champ, come on. Come on, Johnny, Sig deep. Well done. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and welcome to the Sports Cafe for the official weigh-in for tomorrow evening's World Championship Boxing. It's now 12 o'clock exactly. So it's time to get the weigh-in underway. Let's bring to the scales now the champion from South Central Los Angeles. Would you please welcome Carlos Navarro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the champion weighs eight stone and nine pounds. Now let's bring the challenger to the scales now. From Chatham in Kent, Johnny Armour. Eight stone, eight and a half pounds. Both boxers inside the championship weight, the fight is on. Just throw a couple of pennies in, eh? Good job for good luck. Yeah, it's every, yeah, throw a few pennies in for them. I wish him a better luck, eh? Got one on Good luck, Johnny. To you, Johnny. As I said to you before, I'm trained hard enough. Yeah, you got to go and get him now. Got the road working. It's all about just waiting to pick the belt up now. It's not a running 10 miles a day, Dad. It's not as hard as that. It's a good fight, man. 
You want to go to Bailey? Got a great camera yeah. about this fight. I've got no doubts. I can't understand why uh, people are down them. Yeah, he's got a lot of bad well, It's faster than that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, one of the big questions to be answered tonight, can Johnny Armour's eyes stand up to this? It's very important, of course. He's unbeaten, but he does bleed quite a lot. Johnny, that's uh, going to be the question, I suppose. How are you going to avoid the cuts tonight? We've worked well on defence work. Everything's worked well. The training's all been done. It's all in the bag now. Just uh, I want to do the business tonight. But it, but it is a concern for you, isn't it? Um, I haven't really worried, because uh, where I'm sort of next weight above, you know, I ain't drawn in so much. So uh, please God, he's a bit taller, you know, uh, it'll work well. He's a bit of a banger, so, uh, so am I, so, you know, I'll take me time. I think late, the rounds later on, you know, I'll be, I'll be on top. These are difficult moments just before a fight, you want to get it on, don't you? Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Okay, good luck, Johnny. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers.
Jody back. He lost that of his son. 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 He I've got no doubts that the grit and determination he showed. You know, we never got put down there till the end. But Colin done the right thing and threw the towel in. He was turning a bit of punishment. And we don't want to see him get hurt. John, it's a little lick up, Sam. Come on. Come oh, on, come on, Joe. Come on. You're all right. You went on You're fighting, right, He's only a little fella, but he's got a heart the size of a lion. And he proved it there. He was fighting till the end. If he wouldn't have thrown through the towel, and he would have been still fighting. And he'll be back. He'll be back. No, I've got no doubt he'll be back. I know what type of lad he is, and I know he's going to come back. And he'll come back a better fighter for me. And are you going to stick to the training? Yeah, I'm going to stay with him all the way. You know, I'm not disappointed the performance he put in. He done well. And I'll be with him all the way till the end.